Hello and welcome to the February edition of Government at Work. I am your presenter, Charlene Lindsay. Thank you for tuning in. In the headlines, government provides grants to 22 businesses and a partnership between Montserrat and Guernsey begins with the donation of musical instruments. These and other stories after this message. The Government Information Unit, GIU, is the communications arm of the Government of Montserrat. We serve as the official platform for news and information for and about the Government's ministries and departments. We develop information products on Government's policies programs, projects, and activities, which are then channeled through various communication platforms. GIU, your official source for news and information on the government of Montserrat. 22 businesses have received grants valuing $98,895.80 under the Government of Montserrat's 2023 Small Business Relief Fund. The majority of businesses are within the food and beverage, creative and craft, and media entertainment sectors. The businesses will be using the funds to purchase trade-specific equipment, appliances, and tools. Speaking at a brief grants award ceremony on February 21st, Premier and Minister of Finance Honorable Joseph E. Farrell expressed delight at being able to contribute to the development of the private sector. He said, Quote, I am pleased that my government can continue to support the private sector during some of the most challenging times on the global, regional and local economic scenes. End quote. This second round of the Small Business Relief Fund was rolled out in September 2023 with the government of Montserrat earmarking 100,000 Eastern Caribbean dollars to aid businesses that continue to cope with the ongoing effects of the global crises on the local economy. Under the program, locally registered qualifying businesses had an opportunity to benefit from a maximum grant of $5,000. In total, 87 applications were received from a wide range of business sectors. Over the next few weeks, the Ministry of Finance will support the awardees to acquire the items approved under their application. Recipients will also benefit from duty-free exemption on the importation of the items. The Premier and Minister of Finance thanks all applicants for their submissions and looks forward to continuing his support to the private sector. Four customs officers from the Montserrat Customs and Revenue Service, MCRS, are currently in St. Kitts participating in the Regional Customs Law Enforcement Council's accredited Junior Customs Officer Basic Training. Customs officers Keanu Woods, Cleveland Skerritt, Robin Yearwood and Shannon White are attending the training program which began on February 6, 2024. They are undergoing special training in several wide-ranging customs-related subjects that will have both theoretical and practical components. Director General of the MCRS, Mr. Peter W.A. White, said, quote, We take the issue of training and development for all MCRS staff seriously. In the case of customs officers, they have, among other things, the responsibility to safeguard government's revenues and protect our borders by ensuring that all prohibitions and restrictions relating to imports and exports are enforced, while at the same time facilitating legitimate trade and travel. This service provided by the officers can only get better with regular training, mentoring, exposure, and the relevant equipment and resources. End quote. Coincidentally, the Premier of Montserrat, Honorable Joseph E. Farrell, and the Financial Secretary, Honorable Lindona Lambert Sweeney, were both in St. Kitts for the OECS Heads of Government meeting and the ECCB Monetary Council meeting and were able to visit the Montserrat officers at the training facility located at the St. Kitts Customs Headquarters. While there, the Honorable Premier took the time to encourage them to focus on their studies and he was able to get an appreciation of the training the officers are undergoing. 
This training follows on from a two-week attachment in Antigua Customs for a number of the Montserrat Customs officers last year. As well as several local and online training seminars the Customs staff regularly engage in. The Junior Customs Officer Basic Training will conclude the first week of April 2024. The MCRS is planning to send another cohort of Junior Officers to the same Junior Customs Officer Basic Training course when it is organized again in July this year. A partnership between Montserrat and Guernsey has resulted in the Small Beginnings Youth Orchestra receiving musical instruments for the benefit of the island's children. On the 5th of February, Her Excellency Governor Sarah Tucker, Deputy Premier Dr. The Honorable Samuel Joseph, and founder of Small Beginnings Mr. Herman Cupid Francis, accepted a generous donation of musical instruments from the Guernsey Music Service during a small ceremony at the John A. Osborne Airport. Governor Tucker and Mr. Howard Tucker are patrons of Small Beginnings. This partnership between Montserrat and Guernsey Music Service emerged following correspondences initiated by Governor Tucker. This new partnership has been created out of our mutual belief that music is a critical part of human development. No matter what your age, your ability, through music of all varieties, you can develop the skills to express yourself, to lose yourself, to be social, to learn, to have fun, and most of all to just be yourself. I would like to thank the Lieutenant Governor of Guernsey for his support and to Tim Wright and the Guernsey Music Service for the enthusiasm, kindness and energy to get this new relationship between Guernsey and Montserrat off the ground. Today we receive a drum kit, violins, violas, clarinets, French horns, cellos and the music to support it all. These will, I know, all be put to good use by Mr. Herman Cupid Francis and his supporters and small beginnings. And I urge today the parents of the children that attend orchestra to embrace this opportunity, to encourage practice in between classes and to be very proud of your children for having the courage to start from scratch and learn new music. Please support them, help them continue to develop and most of all, make sure they have fun. Connections come along when you least expect them. I reached out across the British family for a partner to collaborate with us here and Guernsey reached back, so the connection is made. Her Excellency, Governor Sarah Tucker. In his remarks, Deputy Premier Dr. The Honourable Samuel Joseph emphasised the importance of partnership and collaboration to achieve success. And this event is a beacon for everything that has gone right. And one of the things that has gone right is the issue of collaboration and of partnership. Collaboration between the government of Montserrat, the OTAs, the governor, the British government, private individuals, the Martin family, Herman Cutie Francis, volunteers who have gotten together and have managed to obtain these instruments for the children of Montserrat for their benefit in terms of their music. So that's one thing that has shown that this has gone right in terms of collaboration and working together. Also, the concept of music and what it shows in an orchestra. If you're playing an orchestra and you're playing your violin and doing your part, perfect. And the drummer is not doing their part. The public, the audience hears noise, they don't hear music. In order for the orchestra to work, every person involved in it have to be doing their part. And even if you are doing your part correctly, and your neighbor is not doing their part correctly, you will still not be part of a group that's working, so you will still have to take your time and to assist them to ensure that they have gotten their stuff done. So it's not only you, in general, who have to worry about, am I getting through, but is your neighbor getting through? Is the person next to you also succeeding? Because if they succeed and you succeed, we also succeed. So Deputy Premier, Dr. The Honorable Samuel Joseph. While expressing gratitude for the donation, founder of Small Beginnings, Mr. Herman Cupid Francis, said his goal is to expose every child on Montserrat to music education. He also stressed the critical role musical education plays in human development. It is getting more and more accepted that musical education 
is an important part of the overall development and well-being and roundedness of individuals. And so I'm pleased to observe that all over the world, musical education is further recognized. But music education is not just theory. To be able to recite a whole lot of words and phrases and so on that are related to music education is just what we call a means to an end. The theory is not the end. I think the ultimate goal of music education is for a child to be able to pick up a musical instrument and play it. And I read a quote from someone, I can't remember now, but I'm on that site with that person, and he said that the quality of music education that one gets should not depend on his ability to buy or pay for it. And so I think this is where this whole thing coming of people who are able to, to donate so that we can afford not only those who can afford it, but everyone, every child on Monserrat, that's my goal, to be exposed to some sort of music education. Founder of Small Beginnings, Mr. Herman Cupid Francis. The governor's office noted that there are also further plans to develop the partnership to include teacher visits and activities for the children. Stay with us. We have more government stories after this message. Welcome back to Government at Work. The Ministry of Health has been working continuously to ensure the best possible services are available to the public, even before the completion of the new National Hospital. Paulisa Reiner attended a site visit with Permanent Secretary within the Ministry of Health, Camille Thomas Gerald, Hospital Project Manager, Hannes de Bruin, and Hospital Manager, Arlene Pontine, who were on hand to show the works that have already begun and provide pertinent information on what to expect in the coming future. At a hospital site visit a few weeks ago, GIU were able to tour the site and speak with key figures to learn what changes the public can expect during the process. Hospital manager Arlene Pontine says that training has been provided to ensure staff are up to date with the management of new equipment and services, as well as the ongoing process to hire new staff. 
So Ministry of Health is aware that we may require additional staff or skills training as we move towards the new hospital. And that is one of the activities that has been planned in terms of refining our needs. But what we continue to do as we expand our services presently is to review our human resource needs. So for example, as we are about to embark on the city and mammography services, we have already sent one of our radiographers to Jamaica and another one will leave shortly to undergo training. And so we have started that work as we expand. And so by the time we move to the new hospital, we expect that we will have all the services. What happens every year is that each ministry is required to submit a training list, needs list. And so the ministry um, decides, okay, anticipates the needs and decides, okay, this is what we need and we submit so we can be supported through the HRMU. We create our business cases for submission with the budget. So even though that process has not been finalized, we are already in progress in terms of improving our human resource um, development. Hospital Manager Arlene Pontine. Permanent Secretary Camille Thomas-Gerald says the ministry has been working over the last five to six years to ensure that new services are available to the public or that current services are improved on. Over the last five to six years, we would have been continuously improving our services. So in one area, we would have expanded our visiting specialist services. So we now have um, specialist language and speech therapists who provide services for our children in the primary care sector. We would have reintroduced the services from the eye doctor who visits once a month or sometimes twice a month from Antigua, so we're able to provide those services. We, we have also introduced or reintroduced endoscopic services, which we have which spans throughout the year. We also have introduced urology services. We have the visiting urologist this week. So just to say that even though you may not hear it on the airwaves, we have also expanded our local provision of medical services. I remember when I joined the Ministry of Health, we were having a little crisis in terms of provision of medical officers. We are now up to about 11. And we also have some specialist services on board within our staff. We would have just appointed an obstetrician gynecologist. So we are providing for the service for the people of Montserrat. And just to say that even though we don't have the new building yet, we have not stopped improving. We, we ensure that we provide the services to people on a regular basis. Permanent Secretary within the Ministry of Health, Camille Thomas-Gerald. Hospital Project Manager Hannes de Bruin says that the new hospital will meet the requirements for international standards. From a standard point of view, the whole design of the hospital um, has been designed according to the UK HBN standards, um, which is very detailed and is very specific about the quality and standard of every single part of a hospital. Um, so we know that the hospital will meet those requirements because it had to be signed off in order to meet that. Because the building is in uh, the Caribbean, there are parts of the, um, the code, the OECS code, that we've applied to the building uh, because that's more relevant. So that's things like, for example, the external insulation of the building um, to make sure that it's as um, energy efficient. So. Uh, we, we know that when this building um, has been completed, it is probably going to be the best, um, most safe building in the island. So, very pleased with that. In terms of timing, um, I think the PS has already mentioned that we uh, need to wait for the decant of services out of the rear of the hospital. Um, so that's planned to occur in May this year. Um, and at that point we will uh, be contracting with a, a, a new main contractor to build the hospital and so they will come in shortly after that um, and the intention is that the build will be approximately two years so we're looking approximately May 2026. Hospital project manager Hannes de Bruin. The new National Hospital Project is funded by the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office Investment 
from the Capital Investment Program for Resilient Economic Growth, or CIPREG. Reporting for Government at Work, I am Paulisa Reiner. Thank you, Paulisa, for that report. The full site visits will be published on GIU's online platforms during the month of March. The government of Montserrat, through the National Anti-Money Laundering and Countering Terrorist Financing Committee, NAMLAC, published the island's first National Risk Assessment, NRA 2023. The NRA is a comprehensive document detailing the risks, exposure and mitigating factors Montserrat faces in relation to money laundering and terrorist financing crimes. The document is a culmination of a collaborative effort across various government agencies and private sector stakeholders and serves as a roadmap outlining the complex landscape of potential threats and vulnerabilities that Montserrat is exposed to and may encounter. However, Namlak noted that the document goes beyond simply compiling risks to the island, describing the NRA as a call to action as it helps the public and private sector in Montserrat to understand our risk while empowering us to proactively mitigate and manage threats and vulnerabilities to safeguard our nation's well-being. The NRA is therefore regarded as a crucial step towards building a more resilient future for the people of Montserrat and a powerful tool for the informed decision-making and collective action. Namlak explained that the NRA lays the groundwork for strategic decision-making, guiding the allocation of resources and informing the development of effective policies and mitigation strategies. It also fosters collaboration across government agencies, private sector entities and communities, strengthening our collective preparedness. Persons interested in reading the Montserrat NRA 2023 or a summary of it can do so on the Government of Montserrat website on the home page in the banner section or by clicking on the Media Library tab on the home page. Then select GOM Publications from the drop-down menu. The summary and full document are both available there in GOM Publications. A team of four individuals from the Lands and Survey Department in Montserrat were placed on a week-long attachment in Nevis during the month of February. The Ministry of Agriculture, Lands, Housing and the Environment, Mali, explained that the initiative serves several crucial objectives, including fostering collaboration, enhancing skills and exchanging knowledge between the two departments. The attachment was primarily aimed at promoting collaboration and strengthening professional ties between the Lands and Survey Department in Montserrat and their counterparts in Nevis. The attachment also provided an excellent opportunity for skill development among the team members from Montserrat as it exposed them to different environment and challenges in Nevis and allowed them to broaden their expertise and gain valuable experience, ultimately contributing to their professional growth. The Ministry further stated that the exchange of knowledge and best practice is another key aspect of this initiative. Both teams had the opportunity to learn from each other's experiences and approaches, leading to mutual improvement and advancement in surveying and land management practices. The attachment was part of a broader knowledge exchange program aimed at enhancing the capabilities of the Lands and Survey Department in Montserrat, which will ultimately contribute to the department's effectiveness in serving the community. We'll have more stories after this break. Welcome back 
affects government at work. An aquaponic system with garden seating will soon be established on the roof of the Davy Hill Community Center thanks to a collaborative effort between the members of the community, government ministries, non-profit organizations and regional institutions. Speaking at the aquaponics project launch ceremony, President of the Davy Hill Action Group, Mrs. Anne Thomas, noted that the first phase of the project began in 2022 when the Montserrat Foundation, the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Agriculture approved funding for steps to be constructed to provide access to the roof. She explained that the group then explored other regional avenues to access funding for the garden and seating area. The Devi Election Group received an invitation to attend a Caribbean Development Bank funded project writing workshop in Jamaica. And at this workshop, many donor agencies shared unavailable funding available to non-government organizations. Ultimately, the Davy Hill Community Action Group, we submitted a project proposal to CCRIF SPC, that's the CRIF, and we got approval November 2023. Of course, the formalities must take place, but here we are today with the first set of monies in our bank account and launching and ready to start officially next week. Following the launch, five participants from the Davy Hill community have been participating in a training program, which will culminate with the participants assembling the aquaponic system on the Davy Hill Community Center's roof. Once the system is completed on the center's roof, the president said that the participants will also benefit from having an aquaponic system constructed at their homes. When our participants have grasped totally the practical and the theoretical components, we will then lead to setting up a system at each of those participants' homes. Each person will help, the, the other four will help each person set up a system at their homes. Of course, all of this will be overseen by our capable technician who will be watching and helping and guiding and correcting, Mr. Joseph Esprit. And when those five systems at the homes of the participants are in place, we go further to attract five additional persons from within our community and exposing them to some training, and then we are going to set up a system at those five other households. So that will bring a total of 11 aquaponic systems within the Davy Hill community. They are going to be up and running. And we are going to be having food and fish produce. President of the Davy Hill Action Group, Mrs. Anne Thomas. Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Cranston Buffong, lauded the efforts of the Davy Hill community and noted that the initiative aligns with modern agricultural practices. Now, the establishment of this community garden is truly a testament to the strength and collaborative spirit of this community, Davy Hill. And for that, you should give yourself a round of applause. You are now going to be the leader in community garden in aquaponics. I don't know if you understand the significance of being able to produce your own food on top of your very own roof. And I hope you don't roll out the little space in the backyard too. So for the older ones who can't get up the steps, a way to get around the backyard, someplace to get it done. One aspect that deserves special mention is how this initiative addresses common challenges that are faced by our traditional farming methods. By utilizing the space on the rooftop for hydroponics garden, it's efficient use of space and it reduces the occurrence of pests and diseases such as what? Agouti, they can't get upstairs. Iguanas, they can't get upstairs. And of course, the rats, once you control your owners, you cannot get upstairs. This forward thinking approach not only protects our crops, but also aligns with modern, sustainable agricultural practices. Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Cranston Buffon. 
The full project launch can be viewed on GIU's YouTube channel or by scanning the QR code now on your screen. 22 government employees benefited from a three-day training program aimed at strengthening and improving the quality of content being disseminated from the government of Montserrat to the public via various forms of media. The training took place from February 26th to 28th at the HR Training Room. It was developed and led by Director Information and Communication Viona Alexander-Smith with support from communication consultant Rudon Eversley and systems analyst in the Department for Information Technology and e-government services, Nish Brown. The director provides further details on the content covered during the training and explains why it was implemented. So the three-day workshop looked at strengthening and improving the coordination and quality of content being disseminated from government of Montserrat to the media and by extension the public. The focus was on introducing a set standard of communication products, protocols and guidelines for government of Montserrat. The reality is that we do not have in our system here information officers or trained communication practitioners working in the various ministries and departments who are connected to the GIU, so to speak, um, as would be the case in other jurisdictions. But there are officers who, in the execution of their roles and responsibilities, may at times be called upon to assist with drafting a press release or drafting a message which is sent to the GIU. Now, what we want is to ensure that these persons understand the fundamentals of writing for the media, and understand how to do that following the journalistic style of writing for press releases, for example, and following the inverted pyramid style of writing, which um, press releases are structured based on putting the most critical information at the top and filtering down to the least important information. So those were the types of discussions we, we had during the training that would help to speed up the processing and editing time when content comes to GIU for dissemination to the press. And it would also empower government ministries and departments, um, individuals to be able to confidently write, to be able to disseminate directly to the media if they actually need to, on occasions if they would need to send content directly to the media, they're doing so within the structure and format prescribed for the government of Montserrat. In other news, a new website was launched for the Electoral Commission of Montserrat. The site went live on February 1st, providing the public with access to relevant legislation under which the Commission operates. The website is designed to be user-friendly and can be navigated using various tabs. The home page showcases beautiful images of the island of Montserrat. To obtain information about the Electoral Commission's members, users will need to click on the About tab. Under the Divisions tab, viewers will be able to see a display of polling division maps. To obtain information on how to register to vote or requirements for elected membership, individuals would need to click on the Register and Candidate tabs respectively. The site also features an FAQs tab containing answers to common questions about elections. The Commission wishes to ensure that the public has access to and is current on election-related information as elections are constitutionally due in 2024. To visit the website, go to electoralcommission.ms or scan the QR code on the screen now. And finally, in this month's Government at Work news package, coordinators of the Emergency Management Accreditation Program, EMAP, spent the week of February 19th in Montserrat facilitating a baseline audit of our standards, while also reviewing our current state of preparedness and provided us with a roadmap for continuous improvement. The training was formally opened by Her Excellency the Governor, Mrs. Sarah Tucker, who also welcomed both the coordinators and participants to the Disaster Management Coordination Agency, DMCA, alongside Director of the DMCA, Mr. Alvin Ryan. 
In her remarks, the governor highlighted the importance of situational awareness, coordination between agencies, and preparation for all types of emergencies. The EMAP is an independent non-profit organization which fosters excellence and accountability in emergency management programs by establishing credible standards applied in a peer review accreditation process. Thank you for tuning in to Government at Work. Join us next month for our next government news package. I am Charlene Lindsay on behalf of the GIU Government at Work production team. Thank you for watching. The Government Information Unit, GIU, is the communications arm of the Government of Montserrat. We serve as the official platform for news and information for and about the Government's ministries and departments. We develop information products on Government's policies, programs, projects and activities, which are then channeled through various communication platforms. GIU, your official source for news and information on the Government of Montserrat.